I think one of the, the big wins in this region have been steadily decreasing the rates of erosion, thanks to planting more cover crops and stabilizing that soil a little bit more. Um, and and the, some, you know, more farmers trying to, to incorporate more diverse management strategies into their operations and try and buffer themselves against these various sources of, of change and disturbance that they'll face. Right now we're sitting in a cotton gin and you may hear the wind, it's blowing 30 mile an hour with gusts up to 40 mile an hour and if you do not have your soil tied down with some sort of cover, it is blowing away right now. That and evaporation is a big deal, so we, we try to mimic what nature has always done. We're going to do more with less inputs, try to conserve water, and, uh, and so I think in the end that's what it's all about. When we do get rainfall, it, it, in the last five years the weather pattern has changed to where we get it in big lump sums, big, big amounts at one time. It's not rare for us to have six, seven inches of rain all at one time. When we do get that rainfall, uh, something that is very important to my operation is being able to harvest that to capture the most of that precipitation so that I can lessen my, my irrigation. Eventually we're going to be dry land, but we're using our water to the fullest at the moment with different types of farming, mainly no-till, um, but really just trying to uh, maximize every bit of water because in the end it's all about the water. I can control how my soil holds water. I can control the, uh, the factors in my soil that, that allow me to grow bigger roots and to, to allow the microbial activity, the biology, the living organisms within my soil to thrive. Management practices that don't hurt my soil, they help my soil. I, I use a three-way crop rotation, cotton, in wheat and fallow. We plant our cotton each year in the wheat stubble that we had left. After the cotton is stripped, we leave that land fallow basically until that next fall and we sow our wheat on that summer fallow ground. And a lot of landowners really want you to have more planted acres of crop each year. And I understand that because I'm a, I'm a, a crop share farmer. My yields have improved enough to where I can make this cropping system work and I'm a huge believer in trying to leave that stubble intact, not disturb that soil, leave that stubble for wind erosion and soil conservation. Sometimes it looks a little rough. It's not that beautiful, clean feel when you go out there to plant, but it's so important to me to leave that, that dead litter crop out there. The, the young farmers in our, in our area, in our community, I'm, I'm just amazed at them because they have no fear. I've tried that on a very, just a small scale, but I think that's phenomenal how they're willing to try that and incorporate that, incorporate that into their, in their cropping pattern. You know, I have people call me from time to time and ask me, you know, what would be the first thing to do. I, I would tell people to start small, you know, to, to try, do their own little experiments. Maybe, maybe if they have always planted wheat for cover, maybe put in a legume that makes like hairy veg or winter peas or some clover. You, you've got to see the results yourself. And so, you know, I just, I just try to encourage people to start wherever they're at and, and just, just come with an open mind. I think as, as farmers, our biggest struggle is in between our ears. Uh, we've always been taught this is how it is, this is how it functions. And no, we, we're working with a living, breathing, life-giving organism that God created. And it, it's something that we're, I don't know if we'll ever completely figure it out. I am incredibly hopeful, right? You think about what these soils used to be, right? We're at the bottom of the Great Plains of the U.S. We were covered in seas of grass and mixes of wildflowers and forbs, and there were large mammals grazing and small wildlife, you know, all over the place. And, you know, we have strategies to try and, and make our systems help sort of return the land to that type of, that type of, of mix, that level of biodiversity that we can incorporate, right? We're a water limited environment, but we've been a water limited environment for a long time, right? And, and the, the soils did just fine under water limited conditions back then. Farmers are smart, <laughs> they're, they're um, innovative, right? They're, they're finding new ways to try and, and incorporate more of that biodiversity and more of those protective regenerative practices into their systems and really, really being stewards of the land in the ways that 
that, that they like to do and that they're good at.